Hey guys, my name is Nikki and I want to welcome you here to Carrie Grace. Alright, so today is going to be a planner video. I've had several of my friends in real life, people that have asked me questions on YouTube and on my blog post, hey Nikki, how can I use a one planner for everything? And when I say everything, I mean how can I use a one planner as a homeschool mom to include all of my lesson plans, all of my family schedules, all of my home tasks, meal planning, you name it, just pretty much everything. And it really, I really had to think about this because I like to use multiple planners for different things. I like to break things down, but I thought, you know, there's gotta be a way to do this. So I sat down with my planners and I just kind of looked through all of them and decided on one planner to kind of give you an example. Obviously this is, isn't the only planner that you could do this with, but this particular planner is one that I had on hand and I felt like it had everything that I needed to be able to break down a lot of different things. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. I'm gonna to share with you how, if you are a homeschool mom, how you can use one planner for everything. The planner I'm going to be using as an example today is the Erin Condren Teacher Planner. Now this is last year's version, the 2016-2017. I did not purchase the Erin Condren 2017-2018 as my lesson planner this year, but the one that I am going to be using this year for homeschool, while it's going to work great for me for homeschool, I didn't feel like it had everything I needed to do everything. All right, so before I get into that, I wanna share with you just a couple of things to kind of look for in a, in a planner if you think this is something that you want to attempt. All right, the first thing that I would look at is the monthly spread. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the monthly spread has Sunday through Saturday full boxes. And what I mean by that is some planners, um, when they're an, like a homeschool planner or a lesson planner, on the monthly view, they will have the Saturday and Sunday together and they'll just be kind of a half box because most people don't tend to do school on those days. But if you're gonna be using this planner for everything, I suggest finding one that has a monthly calendar where all of the boxes are the same for every day of the week. All right, the other thing is you need wanna make sure that it has some notes pages of some kind because you're going to want to be able to have a place to put all the other things that aren't going to fit in your weekly spread. All right, I'll share you know a few things about that as I get into the planner and show you for an example, but those were just a couple of things that I did want to mention up front so that you know what things specifically to look for. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to kind of walk you through how I would break everything down in one planner to make it work. All right guys, so here is the Erin Condren Teacher Planner. This is the planner that I used last year for homeschooling. All right, well let me... All right, at the beginning of this planner, there is kind of a um, monthly breakdown at a glance. You've got July through June. You can see I didn't use this a whole lot, but this is definitely something you could utilize for something right here these pages i don't remember what they were originally for but i was planning to use these as a book list again this wasn't something that i followed through with and actually used but it is definitely a place that you could use to put important information if you needed it all right the next thing i have in here is the graph section and this is where i just kind of made a schedule and this was kind of the schedule that we followed typical school days all right so in this planner there are it is a 12 month planner and um i'm going to be using june as a reference all right so what i would use the monthly spread for is a place kind of for everything i would probably recommend using a color coding system or some kind of stickers or something just to keep it really simple for you. I just chose to use some of the Erin Condren dual tip pens and markers and then you can see I have um, I've got schedules up there at the top that are, that repeat but don't necessarily I didn't necessarily want to write it in each day. I've got swim practice up here. Then I've got um, like church, I've got YouTube videos that I need to keep up with. 
I've got appointments, I've got schedules in here, and then over here, I've got birthdays. And as you can see, I didn't use all of the space in here, so there is definitely room to keep up with quite a bit of information on this monthly spread. This is what I would use kind of as a landing page for everything. It would be schedules, appointments, things like that. All right, so with each month comes three notes pages and they are actually before the monthly spread. I personally, because there's three pages, would kind of break them down into the different things that I needed to keep up with. The first one, I just kind of did an example. I put home projects, places to go, and I just kind of jotted down a few things, but you could use this to keep up with bills. You could use it to keep up with just um, like cleaning projects, home projects, any kind of home related things that you needed to do. Then over here, you could use this one for separate lists. Maybe you want to keep up with meal planning in here. Maybe you want to keep up with your fitness routines, exercise routines. Maybe you want to keep up with your home business or your YouTube channel or blog or things like that. There's a lot of room on this page for you to kind of map it out and use it like you want to. I didn't do that on each page, but on this one, I'll kind of show you how you could do it. This page I used for keeping up with homeschool notes. I've got week 26, 27, 28, 29, and then I kind of have just some to-do lists that I need to do each week. And then I break it down. I've got a place for notes. I've got a place for projects. And I've got a place for prep. These are just the Erin Condren stickers that came in the back of the book. It's nothing special. But you can see I used stickers and just kind of organized the page so that everything is ready. And I would do the same for these two pages depending on what else you needed to track. And then you could leave one blank for just random notes. You could do it however you want to. That's the fun thing about the way this is set up is there's plenty of room for what you need to do. All right, so in this planner, the lesson planning pages are separate from the monthly spreads. This is in a completely different section. And this is where I would keep up with my Monday through Friday, just about everything that needs to be done. Let's see. Let's start at the top. I've got my homeschool. This was week 26. So right here, I've got the date. I've got appointments that are specific to that day. And then I use stickers from the back of the book to track our weekly menu. So like Monday night, we're going to have spaghetti. Tuesday, I know we're having tacos. Wednesday, we're having grilled chicken. So I would use this to keep up with all of the appointments that I need. I've got soccer practice, haircut, church times, co-op, things like that. That is where I would keep up with that. Over here, the Erin Condren has a place for seven actual um, subjects. And what I did is I combined a few of the smaller ones so that I could use one section as a separate to-do list. So right here, I just took some stickers. This is just from a Me and My Big Ideas, The Happy Planner. Um, one of the books and I've got grade worksheets, laundry, bathrooms, make tea, bank. Um, I've just got a lot of all the running to do's that I need to do specific to those days. So I would keep that as a separate to do list. Then the way I would track the homeschool lessons is I would color code. Now, depending on how many children you have will depend on how this will work for you. I have two. I think you could easily fit three or four children in here, but you would have to, um, I would recommend color coding and I would also recommend not writing a lot of things. I just kind of write like lesson numbers, page numbers, things like that to kind of keep us on track. So right here I've got Bible, spelling, and writing. You can see the black represents both children and then each child has their own color and they know those are their lesson plans and then that continues on the page over here one thing to remember that if you set it up this way um, because this is a lesson planner it does just go monday through friday so you're not really going to have a way to track things that you need to do on saturday and Sunday, but that is where your monthly view comes in. So on your monthly view, that is where I would keep it with things you have going on throughout the weekend. 
All right, so the last thing I wanted to touch on and make use of are the checklists in the back of the teacher planner. Now, the teacher planner automatically comes with, I believe it is seven pages. I have two children, so I use one for one kid, one for the other kid to keep up with grades. And then I have several left. So what I did to break this down is I'm going to use this to track my routines, things that I need to do on a daily basis. You can see I numbered this from 1 to 31. And now I can just place check marks for all of my routines. I've got it broken down by the month. I've got July, August, September. And then I just wrote down the things that I want to track. I've got pray, read my Bible, exercise, make bed, empty dishwasher, load of laundry, and then check kids' chores. Then in the evening, I've got a quick tidy and kitchen cleanup. You can see there's a few extra things. You could use this to track your routines. You could use this to track your children's routines. But if you need more pages than are here, you can add more of the checklist when you order your Erin Condren. I just decided to kind of break it down and do three months on a page, and then I will still have plenty to use. All right, so the last thing I want to point out is this does come with a folder. So you do have a folder if you need to keep up with receipts or permission forms or tests that you need to grade or things like that. And then there is a sleeve. I don't have anything in here, but if you had like a printed list for like a soccer schedule or some kind of, you know, something that you need to keep up with, you can add that in here and then this will be protected and you will have it on hand. You can also add more of these if one is not enough. All right guys, so that is how I personally would use one planner for everything if I decided to do that. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other planner requests for me, definitely let me know in the comments below. Just because I don't plan things a certain way doesn't mean I don't want to help you try to find the best way to plan things for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.